With looking for spontaneous and gaze of open nystagmus, the instructions uh, are simply I just sit or kneel in front of the, the patient here and I grasp underneath their chin and have them watch my finger. Maybe I'll switch it to this side, better stage presence here. So this is, if I have Zach look at my finger, I'm about 18 to 24 inches away from his nose and I'm looking to see if there's any nystagmus when he just looks at my finger. So that's spontaneous nystagmus if there is. And then we go to his right, 30 degrees or level with his shoulder, and I hold it there. Again, looking to see if there's any nystagmus. And then we come to his left, to the level of his shoulder, and hold it there, and see if there's any nystagmus. All right? And if there is, that would be gaze of oak nystagmus. In the middle, it's spontaneous. To the side, it's gaze of oak. We also want to look down about 30 degrees and see if there's any nystagmus with that and then up about 30 degrees so we make kind of a T or a plus sign all right and if they have the droopy eyes or when they look down it's hard to see a simple thing you do is just hold their eyelids up as you're doing looking for spontaneous and gaze of nystagmus especially when you look down you can keep those eyelids open all right so that's spontaneous and gaze of open nystagmus. And both those tests are looking, uh, are testing for central and peripheral vestibular disorders. And um, some tips you can think about that would help differentiate between perf uh, peripheral and central would be history is, is very important. Also too, in room light, um, you may see nystagmus, you may not. But that's why we use infrared goggles because if it's an inner ear problem, the nystagmus is going to be more prevalent when they're in the dark. And then when you open up the eyepiece, they can, the nystagmus is lessened. Whereas with a central vestibular disorder, the nystagmus is just as intense in room light as it is in, dark, in the dark. So with um, central stuff, you won't miss it in room light, but you may miss uh, peripheral or inner ear vestibular disorders. And then also too, uh, some cardinal signs that it could be a central problem is what we call downbeat nystagmus. So we never see the eyes beat straight downward. That's a central sign. Or when we see what we call direction changing nystagmus, that's also a central sign. So what that is, is as I have Zach look to his left, and if I see left beat nystagmus, and then I have him swing over to his right, and I see right beat nystagmus, it's changing directions. That's why it's called direction change nystagmus, and that's a, uh, a central sign. All right, so there's some uh, how you test spontaneous and gaze of open nystagmus. So we're going to move from doing tests in room light to where Zachary is going to be in the dark. Like we said before, sometimes if it's from the inner ear, we may miss some of the nystagmus in room light. So the goggles make sure we're not missing any nystagmus, and also makes the eye bigger so it's easier for us to see. All right, so we're going to check spontaneous and gaze of open nystagmus with visual fixation removed, really, so he's gonna be in the dark. So we'll try first with the in, in room light. He's got the eyepiece open, so he can see out of one eye, just to get him accustomed to the goggles. And here's his eye on the big screen. And I show them, um, you know, there's your eye, those four white dots, just the reflection of the infrared light, and it's a, it's a, a live feed. So Zach, you're just sitting still. Can you look a little bit to your left? Oh, just with you, keep your head still, and just move your eyes a little bit to your left. Right, you can see it's nice and solid, it's not bouncing around. Look to your right a little bit. Good, and look up a little bit. And look down a little bit. And it's hard to see, I can't hold those eyelids open, but it is what it is in the go with the goggles, okay? All right, well, let's try looking down just a little bit. What you can do if you can't see the eye, if, the, if there is nystagmus, you'll see the eyelid actually bouncing around. So that can kind of help you out with that. All right, so looking straight ahead, Zach. All right, so now we're gonna close the eyepiece. All right, can you see anything? No. All right, so keep your head still. Can you look just a little bit, keep those eyes wide open? There we go. And look a little bit to your left. and a little bit to your right, 
those eyes wide open, good. It's nice and solid, it's not bouncing around. Look up a little bit. And look down a little bit. Good, okay, and relax. So there you go, that's spontaneous and gaze evoke nystagmus. If you're looking straight ahead, that's spontaneous. Looking to the sides is gaze evoke nystagmus. All right, any questions with that, Zach? No. All right.